In the last video, we saw that working with one-sided limits is not that much different than working with double-sided limits. We're going to see something similar here as well. Here we're evaluating one-sided limits, but the process in general is very similar for what we use to evaluate double-sided limits. We're going to do the same thing we did. We're going to substitute the x value into the function. And if we get the indeterminate form, we're going to factor reduce the function and then substitute. And then that's how we're going to find the limit. So the process is very similar. Here we're asked to find the limit as x approaches 1 from the right. We're talking about continuous functions here. So we don't have to worry too much about what's going on. We're just going to throw in the x value into the function. And then we are going to simplify. So here we get an answer of 6. Here we're going to throw in our target x value of 0 into the function. So I get, uh, let's come down here, I get 0 minus 1 divided by 0 squared plus 1. So you get minus 1 divided by positive 1, which gives us, of course, negative 1. So a very similar process to what we've already discussed. A little bit more practice here with limits. So we're going to plug in, be careful, uh, the 1 is the target x value in that minus 1 means approaching from the left. But we're going to throw in the value of 1 in place of x. So here's where we have to be careful. Here I get 2 divided by 0. Now one thing we want to be careful about is that this is not the indeterminate form. The indeterminate form is 0 divided by 0. So this is not that. So in this case, there's nothing we can do. We can't factor, we can't reduce and reevaluate the limit. So in this case, we would say that the limit does not exist. What you would see here in this case is that there is an asymptote at x equals 1. And when you look at the function graphed, the values on either side of 1 are going to go up to positive infinity and negative infinity. Therefore, the limit would not exist because the y values are going to positive and negative infinity, infinity not approaching a particular value. All right, um, here we're going to do the same thing. We're going to plug in 2, but we're going to end up with a very different result from what we just did. We're going to plug in our x value of 2 into the function. And in this case, we get 0 divided by 0. Now, this is the indeterminate form, which tells us that we should be able to factor and cancel and then reevaluate the limit. So we're going to evaluate the limit as x approaches 2 from the left. We have x minus 2, x plus 2. So we're going to factor the top there, divide that by x minus 2. So we're going to cancel out those common factors. So we're going to reevaluate the limit as x approaches 2 from the left of x plus 2. Okay, so we're going to put the 2 in place of x. We end up with 2 plus 2, which gives us 4. So the limit is equal to 4. So what you're going to see in this case is that at x equals 2, there is a hole in the graph at that value. So when you're looking at what the graph looks like, you come really close to a y value of 4, and you approach the same y value of 4, both from the left and from the right. Therefore, the limit exists and turns out to be 4. In this particular example, we're working with a piecewise defined function. So here we're asked to approach 0. And you notice that our function is defined and split up with 0 being that cutoff value for the top equation and for the bottom equation. So we're asked to approach 0 from the left. Let's draw a little picture of what we've got here. So here's x equals 0. Which function is good for the left? Which equation is good for the left? Well, this means we're using this first equation for x values that are less than or equal to 0. So on this side of 0, we're using this equation to determine the values, 2x minus 4. This equation is being used for x values that are greater than 0. So to the right of 0, we're using cube root of x minus 1, and then on the outside of that, we have a minus 3. So we actually have two different equations that are being used 
for the left and for the right of 0. So since we're approaching from the left, then we're going to be using this equation here to evaluate our function. So what we're really doing is we're evaluating the limit as x approaches 0 from the left. We're using this equation 2x minus 4. So we're going to plug our target x value into that function. And we get a limit of 2 times 0 minus 4, which gives us negative 4 as the left-sided limit. Okay, so here we're approaching from the right. So we're going to use the equation that's good to the right of 0. And it looks like that is this equation here. So this time we're going to evaluate the limit as x approaches 0 from the right. And we're going to use the function cube root of x minus 1 minus 3. So we're going to take our target x value and plug it in place of x. So I get the cube root of 0 minus 1 minus 3. That's the cube root of negative 1. You can use your calculator or don't really need to there. The cube root of negative 1 is negative 1. Subtract 3, we end up getting negative 4. So as we approach from the right, we end up getting negative 4. The last question says, what is the double-sided limit or the two-sided limit? So now let's look back at the left and right-sided limits and see if they match. They both match, and that's a particular y-value that we're approaching the same thing from both sides. So the double-sided limit will be exactly the same, but we have to make sure, of course, that the left and right-hand-sided limits match. And then once we decide that, then we know what we're approaching from both sides of 0.